Malaysian Special Forces. Let's go. This is Malaysia's GGK Commando Training Course. Designed to separate the boys from the men. And turn what's left into elite soldiers. But to earn the Green Beret, they must first survive 13 weeks of hell. A brutal selection course that almost half will fail. So he said that almost half will fail. He also said it's going to be a 13 week course. So I'd be curious to see if there is some sort of selection process before they get to this stage, because half is actually pretty good for a special operations selection. And only the best will survive. <laughs> we ain't picking that guy. Before large forces hit the combat zone, Malaysia's group Garakas Commandos are the first men on the ground. Sneaking in deep behind enemy lines by air, sea, or land. That sounds familiar. Ini pecahkan kepada kumpulan-kumpulan kecil. Yang mana kumpulan-kumpulan kecil ni kalau kita tengok zaman sekarang ni lebih kepada operasi gerila. To gather intelligence. Maksud dia, kita hanya memerlukan lima orang anggota kita yang pakar dalam latihan-latihan ni dan kita akan cari lah local resources daripada mana pun. Rescue hostages or make the kill. They get in and they get out undetected. But what makes them a cut above the rest is their ability to fight and survive in some of the world's most extreme jungles. Yeah, in Malaysia, they don't really have much of a choice. They're going to have to train in the jungles. Um, but so far, what I'm seeing looks pretty legit. Malaysia borders six countries in a region plagued by past conflicts, one of which gave birth to this elite unit. 1963, neighboring country Indonesia launches the Crush Malaysia campaign, sending troops to attack the newly independent nation. A difficult border war was fought deep in the rainforests of Borneo, and a new elite force was needed, skilled in unconventional jungle warfare. Britain's Green Berets, the Royal Marine Commandos, were sent to help train a new group of fighters. 1,600 soldiers volunteered for training. 300 were selected. Of the 50 that went through the first course, only 12 passed. This is not uncommon. This is how most special operations groups are stood up, is you don't really know you need them until you need them, right? So like, say, for instance, Delta Force, we didn't need them until planes started getting hijacked. And so we kind of looked at our British partners. Hey, how are they? How is the SAS? How, how do they find these soldiers? And, and we use that. Today, there are fewer than 3,500 GGK commandos, a small elite club. To join it, these men will have to go through three months of relentless physical and psychological torture that will break all but the best. And the pain starts here. The Special Warfare Training Center in Malacca, Southwest Malaysia. Five a.m. One hundred eighty new recruits are in day one. Always sucks. Course. Just to get here, they have already passed a six-week selection process. Now these survivors are. He said these guys already went through a six-week course, so they've already got rid of a whole lot of baggage. So the only thing that's going to be left is, you know, the cream of the crop, and they're going to have to fight it out for those spots. About to start the real thing. If they thought they knew what was ahead, they were wrong. What is that? In phase one of this course, instructors are looking to lose the weakest recruits 
as quickly as possible. All right. I have never seen that in all my years in the military, but that looks like torture, and I love it. Does anyone know what that's called? Because I need to know that. They've just begun 36 hours of continuous hell that will push everyone to the edge. It seems like torture, but it's designed to find out who really wants to be here. I want to show them myself how far I can go. So day one is always like this, or sometimes I like to call it day zero. I mean, look at that, 138. So say you have 138 guys, you're only going to have 20 make it. What's the best way to get rid of, you know, 20% of the class? Smoke the shit out of them, and that's what they're doing. It's called adrenaline rush. To join the commando, you must be volunteer. So if you enter the main gate, there is a word say, if you are not sure, please go back. The tiger is the commando's regimental crest, signifying bravery, ferocity, and strength. Qualities they expect those that pass to possess. They've done five hours of endless, brutal exercises. The recruits are exhausted. Five hours in. But weakness is not accepted. Recruit 12 isn't keeping up. Banyak kan yang susah kita ada macam didikan ketabahan. Bagi saya setakat ni saya boleh ikut lagi lah. Go! 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 This is what they are fighting for, the coveted Green Beret. Inherited from the Royal Marine Commandos, it's an iconic symbol of an elite group. Jadi, Green Beret ni, uh, sesiapa yang memiliki Green Beret uh, diumpamakan adalah askar yang terbaik di dalam Malaysia. No! But only a select no! few of these recruits will ever get to wear it. The men are drained, but there will be no rest. They've only completed seven hours. They've got 29 more to go. Next is an 11 kilometer run. Go! Chief. With a 17 kilogram combat load and 87 minutes to finish it. A very common misconception is that the guys making this selection or the 1%, which it is true, it is going to be the 1%, but it's not the 1% you think it is. It's not the quarterback of the high school team. It's not the guy that looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. It is usually the guy that you think is not going to make it. That is usually the guy that gets through. And it's because it's mostly right here. To make it harder, it's midday and the temperature is above 30 degrees Celsius. This giant spotlight melting me down. <laughs> it's a real tough. <laughs> Those guys are beasts in it. In this heat, losing fluids is a real problem. Muscles start to cramp and the body starts to overheat. Yeah, I was kind of looking at that. Oh my God, what kind of footwear is that guy wearing? That guy doesn't even have boots on. He got a hole in his sock. See, these, these guys are hard. But what I was going to say is, I don't see, usually I carry a camelback at the top of my rucksack. I wonder how these guys are hydrating. Hydration means failure. 40 minutes into the run, and the sun has claimed its first victim. Dalam keadaan macam ni dia dah kita dah banyak running basic commando jadi dah bagi saya dah biasa. If recruits are sent to the hospital, they automatically fail the course. Wow. With little time left, they can't afford to slow down for a minute. Time is 
south. 77 have failed the run. And the 30 degree heat has taken its toll on everyone. Uh, my knee was injured. Uh, I feel okay. I can breathe in uh, normally, but I'm totally sad. 24 Gosh, hours in, and overnight brutal. another seven recruits have dropped out due to injuries from yesterday's run. 173 survivors are already on their next challenge. It's the 300 meter obstacle course, designed to test balance, confidence, and above all, teamwork. The last hurdle will be the toughest, a 3.5 meter vertical wall. They have to work in team. This is just day one. I mean, it's a three month training course and they're on day one in the humidity, in the heat. That's impressive. They cannot work solo. If they make it solo, they just cannot make it. Teamwork is essential to be a GGK commando. In real operations, teamwork will keep them alive. Recruit 12 is once again struggling, holding up He's the rest still in of the Saya dah 31 yang gegar ni baru ada yang 21, 20. So saya terpaksa bersaing dengan umur yang 10 tahun lebih ke bawah dengan saya. Some teams have already reached the final hurdle, the 3.5 meter wall. I just wanted to touch on that briefly. The 31 year old was saying, yes, I got to compete against these 20, 21 years old. That's not necessarily uncommon that a lot of special forces around the world have guys in their thirties that are still competing with 20 year olds. But what I think a lot of special operations have realized is that they want guys in their thirties because those guys bring another trait. They bring maturity and experience stuff that the 20 year old does not have. Now, it's time for teamwork. To clear this obstacle, they need to form a pyramid. Short guys on the bottom, tallest and lightest aiming for the top. A falling recruit becomes the first casualty. His M16 rifle muzzle puncturing his neck. In battle, failure to work together could mean more than a flesh wound. They reorganize and clear the wall. It's 30 hours in, but not over yet. This obstacle course is just preparing them for an even tougher challenge. Tonight, they will do it in the dark, 10 meters above the ground. Making a small mistake up here could be their biggest. It's pretty hard. Fighting it's pretty to become hardcore. a part of Malaysia's elite commando unit are in phase one of one of the toughest selection courses in the world. Seven of 180 have already failed, and those who have made it this far are totally exhausted. Their next challenge will be the toughest yet, the dreaded Tarzan course. It Tarzan. starts with a 10-meter rope climb. Eight obstacles designed to test their nerve, coordination, and teamwork. Recruits have to navigate from one end to the other using ropes and beams without falling. All at night. It's a confident building exercise. Because that's why you can see this high. And see only a small cable to cross. The lock. And also they have to crawl in the rope. Yang mencabar sekali, masa last sekali untuk didikan ketabahan tu, dia ada macam tazan swing tu. Ada setengah yang tak dapat kejarin tu, tu dia tu bawah. They got my attention now. What he just did is no easy feat. He climbed 30 feet with a full rucksack with his weapon like it was nothing. 
What would be easy for seasoned soldiers under normal circumstances is now compounded by fatigue and stress. Siapa yang tidak gaya kelihatan ke bawah dia akan rasa tak boleh buat benda ni. One recruit has paused at the top, but there is no way down. No! 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 Recruit 12 is doing better than expected. But he's got one final hurdle. The Tarzan swing. So like I said, it's not always the captain of the football team that makes the legend. Sometimes Recruit 12 is the one that's going to make it because Recruit 12 is not in his head. He's going to push himself until he dies, and he will not accept failure. Saya rasa benda tu gembira sebab saya boleh lakukan. Sebab lagi cepat kita buat lagi cepat kita punya benda tu selesai. 36 of the longest hours of their lives have ended. But despite tonight's success, Recruit 12 has failed week one of the course. Uh, untuk kenangan tu, saya rindu bersama dengan saya punya inti saya ni. Sebab kita orang makan bersama, tidur. Even though he failed, I still respect that. You know why? Because he never gave up on himself. There was other people that went through this that were probably faster than him, that were probably stronger than him, and was probably more capable than him, but they quit, and he stayed in it until they told him he has to leave. I respect that. One hundred forty-four recruits remain, and they have 56 more days of the selection course to go. Jeez. Phase two. The training from here moves into a more tactical phase. It's going to get tougher and tougher. Next up, they face a 160-kilometer non-stop forced march that will take them three days. Did you say 160 kilometers? It's the equivalent of doing almost four marathons back to back, with little food and even less rest. Jeez. Normally, one in four don't reach the finish line. Untuk men menguji ketahanan mental dan fizikal. Sekiranya berlaku yang sebenar kita akan lari lebih daripada ini lagi. Jarak dia lebih jauh lagi pada 160 km. Maybe 200 km atau lebih lagi lah. The GGK normally operate on foot, covering huge distances. But getting behind the enemy lines sometimes requires another skill. Kalau kita boleh jalan darat, mungkin banyak risiko yang kita akan mungkin dengan bobby trap, dengan jerangkat sama, dengan dengan berbagai halangan. Dan masa yang diambil adalah lambat. Mungkin 2-3 jam kita nak tujuan. Dan kita akan digugurkan kalau melalui static jam, mungkin dalam uh, 55 saat ke 1 minit, kita dah sampai ke sasaran daripada buka payung. So, uh, tujuan kita menggunakan uh, parachute ni adalah untuk menyusup ke negara atau ke tempat musuh itu dengan lebih cepat dan selamat. But these recruits have to learn to walk before they can fly. It's day one of the longest march of their lives. That guy's convulsing. The terrain is uneven and the weather extremely hot. 50 kilometers on day one, and nine recruits have already dropped out. This is where I feel like a lot of people that want to join special operations, they watch these YouTube videos, they look at the rucksack. Hey, that, that only looks like a 35, 40 pound rucksack. That's no big deal. He's got a weapon, six, seven pounds. They got no Kevlar vest on. They got no helmet. All of that is true. But if you take the accumulation of everything that these guys have been through before they got here, this sucks. 160 kilometers just thinking about it in your head. Sebab dia melampaui akal manusia biasa. Saya daripada Kuala Lumpur, KL. 
KL lah Lahir KL Besar KL Sebab semua orang pandang Orang KL ni lemah Leput Sangat lemah Tapi saya rasa Orang KL boleh Orang KL boleh berjaya Sebagai seorang pemandu They are losing more fluids than they can possibly replace. Dehydration is a real threat. Instructors keep a close eye out for telling signs. Its first symptoms are muscle cramps and dizziness, which can rapidly lead to a full body shutdown. Dia gigit kayu tu supaya dia tak boleh menggigit dia punya lidah sebab dia sekarang ni keadaan panas, panas tinggi. Dia hilang dia punya kawalan otak dia dah hilang Jadi dia akan gigit lidah The recruits are carrying 17 kilogram packs It's up to them to decide when to snack And replace vital fluids I'm sure they're just constantly drinking fluids because like he said before, there's no way that they could possibly drink enough for how far they're walking in that humidity. But I mean, look, look at these guys, look at this guy's boot on the bottom of the hill. You could see his foot. But the instructors set the pace. They are trying to keep the pack together to avoid any stragglers who may be tempted to hitch a ride. It's 15 hours in, and for some, the end of the road. I didn't even see that at the beginning. That guy didn't fall on his own. That guy just kicked him from the back. That's, that's pretty hardcore. Everyone is struggling. Saya suka kalau jalan laju saya suka sangat. Mula-mula saya jalan pun saya terpelih. Tapi kaki saya sakit ya. Tapi saya force saya punya badan saya lepas tu panas semua. Lepas tu okey lah. My body is okay. Uh, there's no much pain. Uh, here and there so my leg is still okay. So far it's so good. I can still walk okay. Can still smiling. <laughs> How, about say, stage, team working. How about say there might be 30 people that make it out of this, but there's going to be one guy that's smiling, and there he is. Leadership will be judged. Recruit 2 needs his section to keep up. I need them to be motivated in everything they do. They just need to run for five seconds. So, dash for five seconds, and then we we'll take rest. Soldier is about teamwork. So, how big or small we are, we need to be together. GGK commandos need to push themselves beyond the normal physical pain barrier. It takes extreme mental strength to keep the body moving. But in combat, that could save... On the downside of it, they're losing everything tactical. They're, they're, there's no tacticalness about this march at all. So sure, maybe sometimes you might have to walk far, but how realistic is a hundred and, what is it, 60 kilometer walk? Kilometers in. As high noon hits, some can't take the pain anymore. Despite Recruit 2's best efforts, one of his buddies is in serious trouble. Disorientation and confusion are signs of advanced dehydration. That guy's gone. His friends want him to finish, but his condition is getting worse. They urgently need to rehydrate him. If he doesn't get saline solution in the next few minutes, he could go into shock and die. He wakes, but needs urgent medical attention. He'll survive. 
But for him and 14 others hospitalized today, it's the end of the line. Dia tenaga kadang-kadang tak, tak sama kan Sebab saya minat je ni Dia bila kita dah Dulu satu peringkat, satu peringkat Kita jadi ada satu kenangan Bagi kita macam peringkat ni Macam saya yang gagal Saya tengok member-member Yang ya, lulus kan Saya jadi Macam sedih lah ya. Sebab tak boleh ikut lah Hundred twenty kilometers into the march, and the survivors finally reach a rest stop. Chase. No one has voluntarily quit yet, but with sixty kilometers left to go, it's early days. Well, if that just doesn't tell you enough about these guys, they they just walked a hundred and twenty kilometers, and no one out of the hundred and thirty-four have voluntarily quit on their own. Only medically dropped or did not meet the standard. That is impressive. It will be much harder. It's my last instructor said that for the first 30 or 40 kilo, uh, you will use your strength, okay? Your feet, your physical. And the rest, you just use your mental uh, to keep going. When they all the case down, they are more like a green berry. It's just a little bit of a case. Sebab itu dia punya matlamat dia datang untuk mengandiri khusus ni. Kalau dia nak fikir dia penat, dia akan gagal. Tomorrow they are going to have to do it all over again. Face dehydration, hunger, pain and the worst enemy of all, self-doubt. All right, that's all the time we have for part one. If you like videos like this, please like, comment and subscribe. And let me know down in the comment section what do you want to see next.